Uh, hey folks, back again. This is Scott from Whiskey and Sunshine. Kind of an interesting little topic for you today. We're going to talk about pocket knives. Specifically pocket knives, the knives you'd carry in your pocket. Um, kind of like an everyday carry type of a situation. And I've got some really interesting choices here. These all, except a couple, are knives that I've actually carried at one time or another for extended periods of time. And uh, I can tell you what I carry now, what I'm going to be carrying, and maybe we can work on why the hell anybody would have so many knives to start with and why I stopped carrying the ones that I chose to stop. And there was a reason behind every one of them. Sometimes uh, good reasons, sometimes bad. But that being said, we'll get started. Okay, I guess the first thing I want to talk about is probably the most common, one of the most common knives, probably for the past, I'm going to say 50 years. This is my old beat up Buck 110 folder. Now, there were times in my life when I used to carry that knife in a sheath every day on my belt. Um, as we get older, we tend to look at some of these decisions and think to myself, you know, hey, uh, that uh, knife probably weighs as much as a small handgun. And how often do I really use it? And I came to the conclusion that it was really a hunting knife. And I also didn't like things hanging off my belt all day. So I tried to lighten the load. Now, that doesn't mean I don't carry this knife at all anymore. I do carry it in hunting season almost every day, especially if I'm going out in the woods, because I don't really think there's a knife that's any better suited for field dressing an animal or even skinning one than these buck knives. I, I have some that are close calls, but we're going to talk about hunting knives later on. But for the time being, I'm going to say that even though I carried this every day for a long time, I'm not going to consider it a pocket knife. It doesn't fit in your pocket. So I'm going to exclude it. Great knife that it is, I'm going to exclude it for the same reason I stopped carrying it. It's too damn big and too heavy. Now from that to one of these little Kershaw Silver Spurs. Now that handle and everything except the, the lock and the blade is completely aluminum. So it's extremely light. It is a razor sharp little knife. They work really good. And I probably have carried one of these for almost 30 years. And it's just so easy to carry because it's so small. It weighs nothing. The sad part of it is, I'm going to tell you why I don't carry this one. Technically, this knife isn't mine. It's mine by default. I had one identical to it. I carried it so much, all of these ribs and where it said Kershaw were worn right off the handle. They were worn smooth. It was just shiny aluminum. But it's so light, I don't know if someday, one day, way back, I left it in a pair of pants or if it came out of my pocket, but I lost it. I had also bought one for my dad, and he still had his, and when he passed, I got that knife. So not only did I get my dad's knife, but uh, it's kind of like getting my old knife back. So really... I don't carry it that much, mostly for sentimental reasons, because I really don't want to lose it, you know, and I don't even know if they're replaceable. Kershaw is a great company, but they're forever changing their knife lines, and uh, some of these products are not made anymore. I know they're not, because I've tried getting stuff replaced, and they, they won't do it, so I kind of have to keep them the way they are and deal with it. They just, uh, they end up going in a sock drawer or in a little cardboard box somewhere, and I I keep them, get them out, sharpen them, clean them up every now and then. And that's one of the special ones. Another special one. This was my dad's hunting knife. This is also a buck folder. And it also came with a sheath. This is a very early, it's called a Esquire. Number 591 buck, I believe. Now they just call them a squire. They've changed the name on them. But as you can see, that one's chrome. All of the hardware on it is chrome instead of being brass. And that is a great knife. It's a nice, slim. You know, you could consider that a uh, 
like a gentleman's folder, if you would. My dad carried that fishing and hunting. He carried it in this sheath. But uh, as you can see, it's a tiny little sheath. It doesn't really need to be on your belt. What happens is they get hung up on stuff. Then it gets all stretched out like this one is. And the, the rivets, you know, the, will turn. You'll rip them. That knife is small enough so that you can easily carry it in a pocket. Easily. Easily. Even in a watch pocket, I think. That's a very nice choice. I don't, I don't carry this uh, particular knife because, again, it was my dad's. And uh, I'm trying to save it. Maybe one day I'll pass it on to my son or daughter or maybe one of my grandkids. And maybe I'm hoping it'll mean something to them. That little buck knife, Esquire or Squire, awesome choice. Right on the borderline between belt carry and pocket carry. Next, I went to the uh, lightweight style knives. I picked up this Schrade. I think they call that a, a tip down or, and it's a drop point. It's got first knife I ever had with saw teeth on it. Also very light. It's what they call a liner lock, meaning that the liner is the actual locking system. You can hear it snap right here. It says press. You push down on it. That locks the knife. What was unique to this one is it at one time had a, uh, a little clip and a strap. So you could clip the, uh, the little clip on your belt loop. Then the strap went in here with a little push button and it snapped in there and locked. So if you lost it out of your pocket, it would just be hanging there on your belt. And you could get it back without losing your knife. I carried this knife working in the mill for many, many, many years. And I think the reason I stopped carrying it was because the, uh, the little strap broke. And I was afraid I was going to lose it. So I gave that knife to my wife, Shelly. <laughs> and we just got it out of her purse just 10 minutes ago <laughs> to bring this back out for the video. But that, that, that knife is field dressed deer. It's cut... Uh, large rubber belts at work. It's, it's, it's been a sport and a utility knife. They weren't very expensive. They were probably only uh, 30 or 40 bucks at the time. And I wouldn't mind having another one, but I, I don't think they make them anymore. When I went to buy a new one, I ended up settling on this. This is a Kershaw. It's a Ken Onion. I think it's a blur. This particular one's got the Tonto blade on it which I didn't care for, but that was all they had at the time. Also got the section of saw teeth. Also another liner lock. You can see the little lock right here. Another big plus of this knife, it's spring assist, one hand opening. So you can literally just take this little stud right here and give it a push and it pops right open for you. The reason I like this over, say, this shred will be because of this belt clip. This belt clip right here. You can clip it on the, you know, outside of your pocket, so the knife's in your pocket, and it stays clipped, and it's always right where you want it. It's not out hanging on your belt in the way. Uh, I stopped carrying this knife, I think, because the pocket clip is worn very thin, where it rubs on my jeans, and it's got to the point where it's so thin that it's always bending, and I kept... Losing it out of my pocket if I get in and out of a vehicle or uh, out of the loader at work or something like that. It would work its way out and I'd lose it. So instead of losing the knife completely, as you can see, it's, it's well used. It has been around. It's been carried. It's stripped wire. I left it on the roof of my Jeep once and I happened to see it bouncing down the road in the rearview mirror. I turned around, went and got it and picked it up. They're tough. I think they go for just under $100 new now. And I don't know. I guess they're probably worth that. I've probably had this one at least 25 years. It's still a great knife. Still a great knife. Still under warranty. They won't warranty any abuse that I've put it through because that was my own thing. But um, great knife. Kershaw Ken Onion Blur. I believe they still sell these to this day. This exact model. Uh, next, we're going to move on to this one, which is my brother's. Um, he also passed away. That's how I ended up with it. Great little knife. This was a Kershaw Whiskey Gap. Very well made. It's got brass liners. The rest of the hardware is all steel. This is in a brief time. I think Kershaw knives were actually being made in Japan. 
And uh, their quality did not go down. If anything, it went up. I carried this knife for a long time myself because it was just so handy. Again, like the silver spur, it's small. It doesn't take up any, any room in your pocket, you know, whatsoever. This one's just heavy enough so that it had a tendency to stay in my pocket. But the problem with this knife and why I stopped carrying it is the wood. The wood got worn. If you can see these rivets, how they're sticking out, the wood has actually gotten worn to the point where the rivets aren't really holding the wood on there anymore. So if I carry it any longer, I'm going to end up losing the wood scales right off this knife. I'd love to be able to find somebody to make me some new ones because it's a beautiful little knife. But until I do, it went in that, uh, that same old sock drawer with all the rest of my cool knives that I eventually will either use or give away. Uh, I don't know. What do we do with them? I'm sure you guys have these drawers too. So that was my Kershaw Whiskey Gap. Now we're going to move on to probably one of the ultimate pocket knives of all time. The Swiss Army Knife. This particular one is called a Pioneer. It's a Swiss Army Knife Pioneer. I also want to thank the folks over to knife, uh, SwissKnifeShop.com. They've been really good about helping get these knives to me in a reasonable amount of time so I can do these videos. Very good to, place to deal with. They have a great website. Uh, they're local to me. They're right here local and they're in New Hampshire. I'm in Maine, so it's very close. Um, and they've got all the Swiss Army stuff and they sell all Leatherman stuff. Really nice store. So check them out if you get a chance. SwissKnifeShop.com They don't pay me to say that. I just use them and they're a good company and I don't mind putting a plug in for a good company. But again, I'm going to stay on my same soapbox about a light, small knife that fits in your pocket. is big enough so that even in hunting season, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate to use that to field rest a deer. I've field rest a deer with one of these silver spurs. The only downside to that is it's so small, sometimes it's hard to, to keep hold of it. You'll, it'll slip out of your fingers. Uh, this Swiss Army knife, even though it's aluminum, they call these A-locks, instead of being uh, the plastic handles like these other ones, it's still got this really nice textured surface. So it's not going to slip around in your hand much. I think the Pioneer is just like this, but it might have one extra blade in it. And I think, oh no, that's the Farmer. It has one extra blade in it, and I think that is a saw. This particular one does not have a saw. It's got the regular blades and the screwdrivers and the awl. And also these Alox knives don't come with the toothpick and the tweezers that some of the other Swiss Army knives do. But I got this because it's rugged and I think it's going to be a good knife to carry. And it's really a good general purpose knife. Great knife. Probably this, the Pioneer or the Farmer, if I had to pick one knife, best all around knife, uh, it would be one of those knives. I think you're looking at right around 50 bucks for one of these. Um, I can tell you that they stay sharp, they're easy to sharpen, they're stainless, they don't rust. I've had knives before that were literally no good because you couldn't keep them sharp. Or they were sharp for a really long time and then when they went dull you couldn't sharpen them because they were so hard. All of these have been right in the middle. I didn't keep knives like that. These are good. I would, uh, I would buy another one of these in a heartbeat. No regrets. I'm going to move into something just a little bit bigger. This again is getting to be the top end of what I would carry size wise for a pocket knife. This is a Swiss Army knife, um, Victoria Knox. There's another, is it, uh, I can't remember what the other company is that was involved in Swiss Army knives, but there was, there were two companies and now uh, Victoria Knox owns them both. Uh, this is a one hand open model. Uh, it's called a uh, Sentinel. Swiss Army Knife Sentinel. You can get it with the uh, serrated teeth on the blade or without. I chose without because I see this as kind of like a, a gentleman's folder. 
Okay, so when I'm talking about a gentleman's folder, the, what I'm, I guess what I'm really trying to get at is um, if you're at that cookout and somebody needs a knife to cut some of the food or something, you, you whip your Leatherman out and out comes the blade. You know, you've been stripping a while with it. You know, maybe you opened a can with a God knows what. Uh, they're not going to look at that too cool. And you're not going to want to eat off of it anyway. One of these you could. Um, these are not going to alarm the public or the party goers so much as, and believe it or not, it's getting to the point where it really bothers some people. You start, you know, even though there's nothing wrong with it, you, uh, somebody needs to cut the steak at the barbecue and you whip out that or something that looks like this, they're going to attract some attention. Whereas just like with firearms, wood is good. They see the wood doesn't look like some kind of a nasty weapon. That Swiss army knife, well respected. I mean, that doesn't look any different than kitchen knife anyway. So Nobody's going to think twice about it. That's why I call them a, you know, gentleman's folder. There is that place in the in the woods as they are at a picnic. They're really a multi-purpose thing to have. Um, it's light. These handles, plastic or nylon, they feel cheap. But I've got Swiss Army knives around here I've had since I was 10 years old. And they still are just the same as they were when I got them. It's good material. I don't know exactly what the steel is. They don't, don't really tell you. But they come out of the box razor sharp. And I mean razor sharp. I'm literally shaving the hair off the back of my hand. Crazy sharp. And one thing I also like about this, it's got the liner lock, the way the others do. This one does have the, uh, the tweezers. And it does have the toothpick over here opposite the tweezers. It has a little ring for a lanyard here if you want to put a lanyard on it or hook your keys to it. Again, this is for the one hand opening. You stick your thumb in that hole. But it's got a pocket clip. Huh? Perfect. Gotta love these pocket clip knives. I am a huge fan of flip knives now. I have been for 20 years. That will clip right to the side of your pocket. It'll hold it back against the back of your pocket. It won't slip down and get all in the way. Uh, so I consider this a viable pocket knife. It's a nice knife. Uh, like I said, a lot like the, the buck, it's kind of a gentleman's folder. You know, nobody's going to look at you funny if you're at a uh, cookout and they don't have a knife to cut the steak with and you whip this out. They're not going to look at you funny. It's uh, pretty much socially acceptable, and it's a, it's a damn nice folding knife with a three-inch blade, and it's light. Lifetime guaranteed. Can't beat it. If you want to go beyond that one step, you can get up to this model. Now that is the Trekker. That is the Swiss Army Trekker, and as you can see, it's got a saw, a bottle opener, a can opener, a screwdriver, two screwdrivers, and it's also got on the back side the toothpick and the tweezers again. Screwdrivers down here so you get like a T-handle Phillips screwdriver. And again, it all folds back up with liner locks into that same basic size package as this. The only difference is the thickness and the Sentinel has the pocket clip. The Trekker does not. Don't know why. They should really make one with one of those. They really should. But this is almost, it's right on the edge, again, of being too big to be a pocket knife. But it's also a multi-tool when you think about it. When you start adding that many features, it's a multi-tool without the pliers is what it is, basically. And it's not over the top. Some of the Swiss Army knives, they put so many tools in them that you're never going to use. And you'll wonder why you're carrying that around after a while. That's my thing. I buy something like this and I'll, I'll carry it for a couple months and go, damn, that's big and I never used half of it. You'll carry it when you go camping or if you're going out on some backcountry adventure. Yeah, great. That's great. But 
for everyday use, I much prefer the thin one with the belt clip. Okay, so that's all well and good. We're talking about folding knives, pocket knives, basically. And what I carry every day in my pocket all the time, even if I'm carrying nothing else at all, is this Leatherman. This particular one is a sidekick. I've had a wingman, uh, a few others. But uh, this one I really like because of the pocket clip. And I like the fact that I can use the knife from the outside without having to open up all the pliers just to get a knife blade out. I use the knife more than I use anything else. And the problem with that is I do use that knife more than I use anything else. And I use it for un all kinds of unspeakable things at work or around the house. Uh, without washing that, I would not eat from that knife. I would not. Any of these other ones, I would. But this to me is a different, this is a different thing. This, yeah, it's got a knife on it, but this is a pocket tool. And they get rough used. I mean, but... If you take, like, for instance, any of these other knives, you've got a nice sharp knife that you can use to take care of your food and whatever you need to do with. And then along with that, if you have a nice multi-tool that you can use for a tool, you pretty much got all your bases covered. I mean, if you're going out serious bushwhacking, you know, long camping trip, yeah, okay, you may want to carry a sheath knife Maybe even uh, something that doesn't fold. Yeah, you know, like a true field knife. And uh, I've got some of those. We're going to do a video about that too. And good uses for those that you don't normally think about. Uh, you know, good uses for them as opposed to uh, fantasy, let's say. But um, Didn't you do a video on multi-tools, Scott? Yes, we did. We'll probably link that down below. We probably will link that down below. Anyway, yes, we've done, this will be a series of videos. We've already done one on multi-tools, more accurately on Leatherman, because those are what I'm the most familiar with. But uh, we're going to do this one on pocket knives. We're going to do one on hunting knives, and I'll probably include uh, sheath knives and uh, what I would consider survival knives or field knives along with that. We have to think about what are you more likely to use and how much junk do you want to be carrying around that you're not going to use. Sometimes less is more. 